All right, let's see how Noah does this. So I will say one thing right here. Noah likes parting gift on Tracer. And I think that this talent was troll on free rework Tracer. It was very bad. And this talent is also really bad on post rework Tracer. Parting gift has pretty much always been the worst talent on its tier since Tracer came out. Alright. <laughs> and so we'll see, because there's a moment where Parting Gift actually comes into play, and we'll talk about it when we get there. Okay, so right here, Noah's getting ready for the level 1 gank. And there's one thing that really infuriates me about this. So for one, Cure is receiving the gank, but is shoving, which I don't get. Because your gank is way less likely to be successful if you just shred the minion wave. Because then, if you shred the minion wave, the other guy will never overstep. Ever. If you shred the minion wave. But, um... Yeah, coffee. <laughs> um, and so then, like, not only does Cure shred the minion wave... And again, Cure knows more about the offlane than I do, so maybe he could explain why that's, that's good and I can't, maybe. But also, Noah just, like, gives up vision of himself for free right here before Kyocha has a chance to misplay. Before Kyocha has a chance to overstep, Noah just walks out in a lane and starts hitting minions. And now Kyocha knows, okay, my wave is all dead and there's a tracer here, I'm just going to back up. And it kind of makes no sense at all. And now they get into this weird arms race back and forth. On the right side, they're winning that arms race. Hmm. I took a pretty troll rotation right there. I don't know why he went this way instead of just going Safeway. So you can see here, Simplicity is just trying to prioritize race above all. That's why he pulse bombed on the building. And uh, there's one thing a lot of players don't know about Tracer, is that if your pulse bomb is on the ground, but if you're touching the bomb that's on the ground, touching the middle part, you still take full damage from it. So you can throw it under a building, and as long as that center part is touching the building, the building will take full damage. So you can actually have multiple buildings touching it and taking full damage. Like, you can have, like, the tower and the gate both touching the middle, and they both take full damage. Um, but I was saying, Coffee, that Noah was ganking top lane, and Cure just, like, shoved his lane, like, while waiting on the gank. And that made it much less likely to actually, like, do anything. Alright, they just trade out siege camps. Cool, cool, cool. Yep, he's just prioritizing that push. He picks Pulse Gen, which is the overpowered level 4. So that's going to be a theme, okay? I want you to watch out for Noah having blink charges and getting hit by Malgana sleeps for no reason. Because that's going to be a really big theme this game. And it's a huge part of why they lost. Okay, so at this point, you always want this Bruiser camp to be pushing during the objective. This camp pushes nearly uh, perpetually, if left un unopposed. And so it does a lot of pressure during an objective. You're basically forced to respond to it or end the objective immediately. Here, they're just racing it out, so he uses Pulse Bomb for race. That's a smart decision. They're just keeping the race going. So again, right here, right? You should never get hit by this. You have three blink charges. Malganus is sleeping next to you. And he just doesn't blink while Malganus is sleeping next to him. So he's not getting super punished for it right at this moment. And in fact, with the D.Va zoning off and whatnot, they're able to win that immortal pretty handily. I want to force a Nova draft. I don't think you can buy squids. I think gifting subs might give squids, so I guess you can technically buy squids. I don't know. You'd have to ask one of my uh, power users, power fans. I don't know. So right here, I believe, is where a rather interesting parting gift play happens. It might be later in the game.
So like right here, Kettle's run out of cooldowns and he can poke. The thing is, poking Malganus actually does very little this game. Because, Fueled by Torment, a lot of your damage actually gets negated by Malganus right here. So he goes and pops uh, his Necrotic Embrace, he gets physical armor, and, um, and he also heals every time he takes damage, so it's actually pretty hard to whittle him down. This engage was never going to work, but that's okay, it shouldn't really be a problem. Wit kind of goes wild right here, but he'll be okay. You just take the camp right after, it's right next to you, perfect. The first gifted sub gives points though, I see. So again, notice right there, he gets hit by a sleep that he didn't need to get hit by. You just hit Malganus at max range. And see right here, you've got a little bit of time. Oh, he actually gets hit by the stab over the wall, I see. Yeah. And then recalls it out. This is actually okay outside of getting hit by the stab over the wall. He's a little bit blink happy. Instead of just having good positioning, he kind of relies on blinks to carry him around. He misses the pulse bomb right there. I do it every now and then. That's just a mechanical issue. They're racing it out. They're losing this time just by a little bit. Here does have a full explosion though. Actually sending Tracer to soak out bot lane while the enemy, while the rest of their team goes and soaks or uh, defends a mortal. Because if one team does this and the other team doesn't, then they're just going to have a huge advantage for level 10. Got Filth doing a really good job zoning Tracer out of this XP globe. Actually lets Noah get it, rip Rooney. I don't know if it's because he didn't have vision of the rest of blue team or what. Both teams looking for level 10 here. Ooh, Rainer actually getting kind of caught. Okay, so look right there. The Pulse Bomb misses. And then... Still going in, still going in. Still going in. Let's look at that Rainer death recap. Recall. Parting gift secured them this kill. Right? Right? Parting gift secured them this kill. But the thing is, they also get this kill if he just has a second melee. If he just has a second melee, this Rainer dies every time and you don't need to land it. Because look, he melees right here and then he could just go in and just melee him again right there. And then they have the kill every time. There's zero need for this parting gift play. And the whole reason this was even a play was because he missed Pulse Bomb. So if he hit Pulse Bomb, he wouldn't have needed Parting Gifts. And if he had 1-2 Punch, he gets the kill anyway. So, like, I don't consider this, like, Parting Gift value. Like, yeah, I guess it's Parting Gift value. But it's like, you would have gotten the value anyway by just having the talent, like, another talent you were supposed to have. Like... You could have been Tracer Rounds and hit your Pulse Bomb and get the kill, or you could have been <laughs> one 2 punch and gotten the kill. So yeah, the difference, to put it in perspective, Coffee, the difference between a melee cast and a parting gift, right now melee at level 10 is 326, and parting gift is 370. It's not that much of a difference. 44 damage, right? And Raynor, the overkill on Cocktail was 288. You 100% still get this kill with one 2 punch. Gotta love that. Oh, can we get that lurking arm ASMR? Oh, hold on, I gotta bump up myself. Can I get a Craigasm in the chat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, I've seen these films before. I like how it goes away when I click off of a hero. Hold on, is it only when I'm on, when I'm on Stuko? It's only when I'm on the enemy team, so they can hear the noise of Lurking Arm. 
Oh, that's hilarious. Okay. See, I know. Parting gifts, like, I, I think it's Giga Troll that Noah takes parting gifts. And I'm not just saying that, like, because, you know, every now and then I'm like, oh, people say talents are Giga Troll because they're closed minded. Like, guys, I, I say it's Giga Troll because I've done the research and this talent doesn't do anything good. So here again, we see Noah get hit by a sleep that he shouldn't have gotten hit by. It, it contributes a little bit more poke damage onto him, which actually is going to matter. Especially because he eats that orb that was kind of unnecessary. And I think that's actually a big theme towards the later half of this game is eating a lot of orbs. Yeah, a lot of games do that. Zelos, like for instance, um, I think Overwatch, like enemy footsteps are louder than your allies, for example. And how like your teammates will play sound effects that only you can hear that's like behind you and stuff like that. So let's see right here. He's got a blink charge. He's got a blink charge. And then he has another one right here. It's just slow reaction time to the orb. Sure. We went to five guys. Cool. Thank you. Is that precarious? Okay. So yeah, he had the orb. That's just slow reaction time. And also he could have put a pulse bomb down, which would have given him health and another blink charge. So this is just kind of taking unnecessary damage, but he'll be okay. If Party Gift gave blink charges with the bombs, we could have an argument to pick it. Eh, I probably still wouldn't pick it. That talent is kind of garbage, my guy. The problem is that Parting Gift's main effect does nearly nothing. Like, a lot of times it won't hit the correct target, and a lot of times it won't matter when it hits the correct target. And even when it does hit the correct target, one two punch would have done the same thing anyway one two punch would have done the exact same thing that parting gift did but you don't need to aim anything and it's not tied to your recall and it also has synergy with your 16s like why would you ever go parting gift it just like actually doesn't make sense like parting gift was a troll talent before and after rework People just didn't admit it before the rework because they were very stubborn in their ways. But at least now, like, people actually see. Oh god, I forgot about this play. <laughs> Let's run it back. Okay, I forgot about this one. So this is a play... That happened, let me see. So he has Quantum Spike, so it's a little bit easier to dive and be aggressive. So right here, Noah's thinking to himself, all right, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna kill Li Ming. The problem is he misses Bum. And also some of his team got slept. There's a really good wave, super good wave by Li Ming from Ultra Lisk on him and he just dies. Yeah, this is a really risky play on a really hard to execute dive where you're unlikely to get the kill, but you are likely to die. Or you are likely to die. I just think that was kind of misguided. If Parting Gift splashed, it would be fair more consistent. I think Parting Gift could literally just be an AoE damage pulse around your recall, and it still wouldn't, like, necessarily be the best option. <laughs> like, it could literally just pulse the damage in a circle around you, like a small circle, melee range around you, and it would not be as good, I don't think, as the other options. It's kind of insane. Oof. So, yep. so you notice here the enemy team can be very aggressive with their composition. After Noah ints, his team just kind of loses a lot, but they do end up uh, responding pretty well. Yeah, this is a really good response. Forces out Kyocho's ults. That was a really good job standing in Sanctification there. You're never going to kill this Li Ming, ever. And at least if that happened, be a reliable burst option for the Giga Dives, yeah. I think it would be pickable if it was just an AoE damage pulse, but you'd have to do something like that to make the talent pickable. Because right now, Parting Gift is just garbage. Like it was before. So again, right there, Sleep that could have been dodged. 
And then again, here is just another really misguided dive. And this is part of the reason why this talent is terrible. Uh, Nensori? Yeah, that's the thing. If you're like full diving, then the second W won't do anything. But the thing is, like, he's trying to do that and failing. Because that playstyle is like probably the hardest way to play Tracer and also the least consistent. Like you can see he tried to pull it off on bot fort right here, didn't work. He's gonna try to pull it off again on Li Ming right here, it's not gonna work. And this is actually why I say Parting Gift is bad is because it jibates you into bad plays. So you can see right here, he's gonna go in on Li Ming just like he did before. Drop that pulse bomb, that's gonna land, melee's gonna land. And then, while he could have stayed on the target, he just recalls. None of the Parting Gifts land, actually hold on. How much does it deal? No, it actually did land a... Uh, I actually can't tell who it hit. Let me see. I think... Did it hit the raider? No, I think it hit Li Ming. But either way. It's a hella debated play. Like, he's going for these dives that just won't work. That's what happened in bot fort, it's what happened right here. They're just misguided. And that's actually the problem with a lot of Tracer players, is that they just go in on dives that just aren't going to work. Like, even if you hit everything. Kind of a risky move, trading into Kyocha. That's a really good play. Ooh. He needed to blink up into this bush to dodge the Arcane Orb rather than away. So he tanked the damage for no reason. And now he's super, super low as a result, so he's very not confident about going in. Very unconfident. And again right there, he just walks too far forward, tanks the orb. Tatsukichu, what's going on, buddy? Yeah! Yeet! Hell yeah. Welcome, Tatsuki viewers. Hello, sharks. The frenzy. That's what it is, yeah. But you are sharks. Yeah! Yeet. Hell yeah, Tats. Right now we're just doing some CCL Tracer replay reviews. We're mostly done with this game, and then we're gonna go on, maybe play Storm League, maybe finish it off after there, who knows. But how is your stream? Also, sometimes people play, uh, people play Tracer like they gotta stack Zildjian style. Every auto they can possibly take, they go for regardless of risk or actual impact of the damage. Hell yeah. I feel you. Tracer is all about playing to the damage type that wins you that game in front of you. Because Tracer doesn't do anything but damage, so she does trading damage, she does burst damage, she does sustain damage. You gotta play to what fits that game. And right there, I think just like these dives don't make any sense. Rough games today, stayed strong and had fun though? Hell yeah. That's really cool. Thank you, Von Cruz. Tatsuki Banana, dude. Okay, so I had, um... For the longest time, I had an emote called Mock Reban, right? And I would always try to type in Mock Reban, and the way I did that, I was sh I would shorthand Eban. But then Discord and Twitch were always like, do you want to say Tatsky Banana? <laughs> and I'm like, no, I want to say Mock Reban. <laughs> and it would always give me the wrong emote. So that's what I think of every single time. All right. You want the mana, indeed. I mean, dude, whoever wants the banana, they can have it if you know what I'm saying. Yeet! I didn't say that, you didn't hear that. Anyway, back to the gameplay. Um, so we've got Noah over here, harassing away. Oh, I remember this play. Let's go back and watch over it. Can't remember this game's talents, but what's the odds we got bullet spray and BOE? Uh, pretty high. Pretty high. People just slam lock bullet spray regardless of game. Okay, so here he sees uh, Li Ming all caught out. Just kind of misses the bomb because he times it with blink. This is actually a thing with uh, Li Ming. This is something really against any hero who has like a dash or a blink or anything like that is that you either need to get them snap, like just right as soon as you see them, you need to snap it before they can react, or you need to stay on them and wait for the teleport if you can. 
Unless you're, like, time sensitive. And right there, he just kind of slams the bomb. Doesn't hit it. Gets jabated into chasing after the bomb misses. Is hell out of position and dies. The second the bomb misses, he needs to back off. As soon as this bomb misses, he needs to back off. And he still totally can from this position. He can just blink away. But instead, he actually goes in a little bit further. And then he recalls back into the enemy team. And it's just... I mean, there's no real slow-mo coffee. Do you want me to just start and stop? I mean, I think he had his cursor forward. He pressed QR, so he blinked past his cursor and probably R'd behind him if I had to guess. This is what I mean. Like, a lot of people just get really jabated into playing Tracer for these, like, dives. And I think he's been largely ineffective in several team fights in a row. And this is kind of the problem with Tracer. Is that if you... Hey, it's heavy-handed. That's pretty good. Is that if you don't position yourself where you need to be and you don't go for smart kill targets, you are effectively not a hero. You effectively don't exist. Because a lot of heroes, even when you're not playing them well, you're still doing something. Tracer can have fights where she literally contributes like nearly nothing. If you're just not where you're supposed to be. Because you're so fragile and easy to zone. So here, that's another unnecessary sleep. Didn't need to land, but that's okay. Tyrael's able to shield it. I think Ricochet probably gets a lot of value this game, and also one really nice thing about Ricochet is that it bounces out of your vision. So into bushes, around corners, whatever you want, it bounces, and that's actually super, super nice on this map. Um, Tracer Rounds of 1 is good. I think that either one here was fine. Um, this one, yeah, you, you really could have gone either level 1 and you would have been good. No, I like Tracer Rounds. Especially on Battlefield of Eternity. Battlefield of Eternity, and if I'm going to be playing bottom side on Dragonshire a lot, I'll go Tracer Rounds. Or if I know that I'm just going to be at max auto range for most of the team fights, like when I'm into a Varian or when I'm into an Uther, a lot of times I'll go Tracer Rounds and it just lets me stand a little bit farther away. So the reveal and range both come into account. Yeah, this one he just blinks right into the enemy team. <laughs> I think like literally every fight can be summed up as like Noah thinks he sees a burst kill. He doesn't actually have it. He dies. I mean, it can matter a lot on this map, Coffee. Because it means you get to stay at max range and people can't just walk around a corner and then all of a sudden your damage stops unless you face check. Yeah, no, this one is just blinking into the enemy team because he wants to dive Ming. I think this is like three times in a row that he tries to dive Ming and gets debated and dies. And notice how this is such a close game. Even with him kind of inting every fight. So I can't help but feel like if Noah just kind of chilled out a bit, like they would have destroyed this game. I mean, sure, that's what I'm talking about, Coffee. Like, those are the cases I mentioned, is like when you're trying to stay at max range to avoid stuff like Varian or Uther, uh, when you're fighting in bushes a lot on Battlefield of Eternity in the bottom half of the map of Dragonshire. So, like, if I know I'm going to be camping top on Dragonshire, I don't go uh, Tracer Rounds. I go 1 2, but if I'm going to be bot side a lot, then like Tracer Rounds is really good. So, if they have like a Urel top lane, there's not going to be that much point for me to gank them, and I'm probably going to go 1 2 punch, or I'm probably going to go Tracer Rounds and just camp bot side. But if they have like uh, somebody who's really weak to ganks, like a Malfail or a Rexar or something, it's probably going 1 2 punch and camping top on Dragonshire. racing it out. They're a decent bit behind. Looks like their plan is just get as much races as they can right now. Fight it out at halftime.
Mm. They're down cooldowns, like both of their frontline are down cooldowns. That would have been a fine time to auto attack, but I guess he just wanted to hit the immortal. Right here, he's gonna dive on the Li Ming again. Yeah. I don't think Parting Gift or Pulse Bomb hit there, but Li Ming was just so low it didn't matter. Yeah. That was the right call. They race it out because they know uh, SSK can't really do anything, but hey, look, he gets slept for no reason. Notice how they just had a guaranteed immortal after getting that pick off on this sleeming. He misses the bomb, misses parting gift, but okay, they still got it anyway. And then he's way over here, has plenty of time to see Mal or Malganus walking in, gets hit by the sleep for no reason, and just dies. Like... Ugh, wait, this is a dope animation. What the hell? What is going on here? Wait, this actually looks so cool. What the hell? Hell yeah. It's like the blood splurt on it at the same time. Aside from being able to continue pew pewing players in the bushes, you need to know other heroes' auto ranges to take advantage of it. I don't necessarily think so, Zelos. Like, if you just know that you'd never want to get in melee range of the enemy team, like, if you just want to poke them from max range into stuff like Uther and Varian, like, it can be super, super good. I mean, you don't really trade with Raynor in the first place outside of, like, with Bomb. So, yep, this just went from a guaranteed Immortal, which was very likely to be at minimum a keep, and a uh, decent chance at ending the game, into a <laughs> sidestep King's Immortal for some reason. I think this just shows, like, what happens if you think that Tracer is Zeratul. Even then, though, like, last last fight, the fight, the dive was a good idea. It was just getting caught by sleep for no reason. We go ahead and we harass this out. I would go on Kyocha right here. Like, Kyocha's taking big damage. If Noah was hitting him the whole time, Kyocha would have been super zoned. There's another sleep dart for no reason. Or not sleep dart, you know what I mean. Like, I, I just don't get it, <laughs> actually. <laughs> but let's look at it again. Okay. So he dies to that for no reason, which gives SSK the possibility of sieging for end here. SSK goes for it, wins the 5v4, and that's game. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I think the biggest thing here was just, like, not playing around Malganus very well. There was definitely some times where it's, like, not playing into Ming's orbs, not considering where they're going to come from over the wall, not how to position accordingly... Um, or getting, like, way too jubated in diving instead of just, like, free-hitting this enemy team because this is a really easy team to bully as Tracer. Literally, all you have to do is just hit someone that isn't Raynor. Or if you have Bomb, you can even hit Raynor, too, because you win the trade with Pulse Bomb. Like, until 16, where he gets paint them red, and then Tracer just becomes, or Raynor becomes a trading monster. But, uh, yeah, like... <laughs> Missed a lot of bombs, got super jubated on the dives, ate Malganus sleeps for no reason. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, no, it, it, it is kind of frustrating, Coffee, because I've seen people say that Tracer is bad, and that's why they don't play the hero. And I'm just, like, looking at the actual Tracer games that are being played, and, like, I hope that it, it doesn't make me sound like an elitist to say that, like, this stuff should never happen. You know what I mean? Like, I hope that's that's, like... I hope that's not me just sounding like a dick or, like, an elitist... When I say that you just, like, shouldn't walk face first into Malganus, like, I don't know.
It's like, I'll, I'll tell people, I'm like, man, Tracer is underrated. This hero is really overpowered right now. And they're like, no, Tracer's bad. People lose with her. And I'm like, this is why. <laughs> like, it's stuff like this. Alrighty. Either way, that about wraps up the game. Uh, I've, I've harped on this same thing multiple times now, and I'm sure you get the point. Um, that just about takes up most of tonight's stream. I've had a good time, y'all. Uh, I'm going to go ahead, and at this point, I'm going to go eat my dinner. Love you all. You all are great. Had a good time.